Hi, True Crime Grapevine fans. It's me, Patty Lee. All right, so this is part of episode 25, our love kills flight. This is our couples kills flight. This is when love stinks. Love stinks. Yeah, yeah. Okay, if you know, you know. All right, um, we are pairing our first love stinks case our only fans, Courtney, let's see, well, she's Courtney Taylor or Courtney Clinny. Here's to you, Courtney. Girl, girl, you're in danger. Mmm. Mmm. What are we drinking? Well, since she's from Miami, or the crime occurred in Miami, and then she ended up in Hawaii. Not a bad. Not a bad rehab spot if you can get it, right? Am I right? Um, mm, mm. Miami Margarita. It's actually a Frozen Dales Margarita. Pretty fabulous since we're um, in the tropics. Okay, so this is week 25. Today is August 13th. People. Way back, like doo -doo 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 in episode eight, I told you about an unaliving, a murder, if you will, that, um, or at least a stabbing. It wasn't clear the cause at that very moment, although we did have some clues. So in Miami, um, back on, when was this? April. Well, our eighth week, it was in the first um, week of April um, or so. I know I have it. I know I wrote it down. Um, April 3rd, Miss Clinny with her boyfriend Toby um, were at home. They had, he had gone out and gotten sandwiches and something went awry. Because by that evening, she was calling 911 saying she had stabbed her boyfriend. And somebody got pictures from another apartment building with a telescopic lens. And there were pictures of her, like, you know, tied, sitting on the floor with blood all over her. She obviously, I mean, it was horrible. Apparently now we have a little more information because we have some 911 tapes. At that moment, um... He was taken away in an ambulance, and she was taken to the police station, but then taken for a like twenty, um, like seventy-two hour hold, maybe because she was freaking out. And the time at the time, she claimed that her boyfriend was trying to hurt her, and he had held her up by the neck. And she was just trying to get away and she threw this knife from 10 feet away and it just happened to hit him right in the shoulder. And there had been another case where somebody had a sh that was um, stabbed by somebody once in the shoulder and you would think, I mean, you have to get just right, but it can, it, there's a lot of um, big, huge arteries. I mean, so now she's this teeny tiny little blonde, very buxom, good looking, um, only fans model, only fans model. Um, oh, and she also claimed, then I guess, that she was trafficked, that she's been human trafficked. Now, I don't know if she's trafficking herself because it's very unclear because she's got 2 million followers on Instagram and she's mostly unclothed and posing and showing off her very young and beautiful body. So I don't, I don't understand about trafficking. She had dated... Toby, um, okay, so his family had immigrated, and I'm going to have a hard time, Ab Abu Sully, ah, Abu Sully, Abu Sully, Christian Abu Sully, but, um, they knew, his friends called him Toby, um, they had been dating for, like, three years, they had dated in Texas, and then moved together to Miami in this fabulous, Miami Oceanside a condo apartment building mm. and they did have problems though 
apparently lots of fighting. Now, as soon as this happened, the people in Miami that um, hung out with them went on record with the news and they were like, you know, he, he wasn't violent. He was very good when she, I mean, she got drunk and got a little crazy and I, they could believe she would hit him, but not that he would ever touch her. Then there was this weirdo, sorry, I don't know if he's weird, but it just seems strange, some rando person who did not have a name who said, oh yeah, I saw him, I saw him hitting her, I couldn't tell if it was a closed or open fist, but from my apartment, okay. Okay, dude, I mean, like a week ago. I'm like, you seem like a rand, and the words of Amber Heard, you seem like a rando. Um, but you know, he was apparently whatever, but he didn't really know them. So I'm going to put, I put more credence. And if you go back to my eighth episode, you will see that I pretty much believed the people that knew them. Um, and also the fact that who was unalived and who was not seemed to, it, it, and, and it looked to me like they said it was in a downward motion. It seemed like maybe because they had taken a nap, like, was he asleep? and she jumped on top and did it, we don't know. Because I mean, she's pretty tiny, and he was this big, huge, good-looking dude. Um, so, back then, the second time we talked about um, Miss Cloney, Cloney um, you know, Courtney Taylor, she was in a, um, her dad was there, it was after she had gotten out of um, being checked out mentally, she was not arrested, she was in a hotel with her father, and people were yelling at her and saying, what do you do now? You know, people, people, were, not, people were not having it, as they say. Mm. Oh, sorry. Love me a frozen margarita. Um, there was a press briefing on Thursday. Apparently... The police had looked into everything, gotten more evidence, and, yeah, decided that she was guilty of um, aggravated homicide. They found where she was. She was in Hawaii. She was being treated for PTSD and a substance problem. I mean, hey, if you're going to get over a substance problem, be nice to do it on the beaches of Hawaii. I'm sure she wasn't on the beach, right? They, those places wouldn't be right on the beach, would they? Mm. Interesting, though, that she went to Hawaii. Here's why it's interesting. So, if you look at her background, apparently, since 2015, she's been committing crimes, having to go to court for crimes, and then not showing up at court. Oh, she lives in another state. So, there's a bench warrant out. So, it started in, apparently, it started, let me flip my little notes. Oh, yeah, she got a two-pager. Um, and... In 2015, um, she was, okay, in 2015 in California, she had a public indecency. So she's 26 now, so she was underage. Um, she didn't show up for a court thing. She has a bench warrant. Then she's living in Texas. In Texas, she gets um, in a crazy accident, and I believe there was also a physical altercation with the accident. She's supposed to go to court. They, she had an $8,000 bond she had to pay, and she had to have a thing to blow on her car. Um, she was supposed to be there. I believe she was supposed to go back for that. Um, and then she moves, then she moves out of state to Florida right before she's supposed to show up for her, um, court hearing, for the preliminary court hearing in Texas doesn't show up for that because by this time now she is um, unalived her boyfriend in Florida. So that happened in Florida and this was in the past, let's see, I think this was this year in 2022. She, the other one was in 20, was it in 2020? The DUI was in 2020. So she went from 2015, California, moved to Texas, in Texas, she has a DUI, so she went five years without any trouble, um, although there's a bench warrant still out in California for her. Um, then in Texas, 
had that little blip in 2020. By 2022, she's having a trial starts, but oops, can't go to that. She ends up skipping that. At in It was in late June because they moved it back because of the unfortunate incident with her boyfriend. But she still skips out on that. So I don't know because she had to go to Hawaii. So she was gotten you know got in trouble in california moved to texas got in trouble in texas moved to florida got in trouble in florida moved to hawaii for her you know it seems like she moves out of state when the heat gets on the heat is on so but now florida is not having it they uh put out a warrant for her arrest she was booked in florida or booked in hawaii and being extradited back to florida for um, manslaughter, it, it it the crime the injury does not match her story um, on the scene. Apparently, see we didn't hear all this because it, now this is evidence that when you get arrested, there's an affidavit, a warrant. They like you know you hear more about it. So what we didn't know was she had said, "Oh yeah, he he choked me. He held me up against the wall." They checked her out. No injuries to her body, so that didn't check out. The um, fatal stabbing uh, was from it was like it went in like eight centimeters at a downward angle no it wasn't thrown across the room um, also apparently the 911 call she made he was they could hear him in the background saying you're killing me you're killing me I can't feel my arm I'm dying or something like that and she was saying I'm sorry baby I'm sorry okay the piece de resistance on all of this is there's also footage from the elevator in their apartment that shows like she goes in she's like angry smacking the buttons he walks in and it's like like girl don't stop and he's much bigger than she is so and then she starts hitting him and swatting him like hard but she's so tiny and he's kind of like laughing and like grabbing her but she's landing some blows so apparently there was lots of domestic, there were domestic problems with them in, with her, against him. Does anybody hear any like Johnny Depp, Amber Heard, shades of at this point? It is interesting how often, and his family in Houston was saying basically, look, you didn't arrest her because she's a white woman. She didn't get arrested right that night because she's, um, maybe... Probably a little bit of that, I would say, is at play because the police look at teeny tiny, you know, he happened to be um, um, African American. She, uh, or maybe he was full African. I think he, I don't know if he was born in Nigeria and they immigrated to Texas. That might have been the story. Or if he was actually born in Texas. But regardless, I mean, do people give women the benefit of the doubt? Certainly. And it's Florida, so I don't know. Florida seems to be a little wackadoodle sometimes. So, But eventually, they did the right thing. And not really that long. And we want things to happen immediately. But it usually does take some time. And they went all the way to Hawaii to get her. So, Florida police in Miami, this margarita is for you. Thank you for doing you did the right thing and I'm and I'm glad they took they took time to find out because there is domestic violence and there is self-defense which are uh -huh, sorry self-defense that's what they're claiming but the fact that she's on tape saying she's sorry baby the fact that she's seen smacking him around the the, the fact that the friends know this the fact that she's got a, a pattern of drinking and getting out of control since she was 19, 20, I think, like I said, girl, you're in danger. She is. Okay. Mm. We will um, find out more about this case. We will be following it. And it is good to know that justice is happening for Christian and that you know and she does need help she obviously has a problem she drinks and goes insane and is violent and it, 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 it looks to have 
gotten worse and worse and worse and I don't think it was going to end. So this might be something that she needs. All right. That's uh, it for that case and I'll be moving on to the next one. If you want, go watch that video. It will be, it, it'll probably be together with the um, other Love Kills video next. All right. Bye. Like and subscribe.